Hello and welcome to Fearless Authenticity with me, Jean Sparrow. This is my podcast about finding success in the gift of who we truly are. Now, these are conversations with people who know what that looks like, what it feels like. They have walked the walk and talked the talk. And I do this in the hopes that it'll be an inspiration for you and myself to find more ways to use our unique gifts to pursue our passions, make our dreams come true, and engage with the world in the way that we were created to serve. Now, listen here. I always say this, I hope it gets deep because that's where we find the good stuff, but never get it twisted. This is about the fun of life because if it ain't fun, it ain't worth doing. So let's dare to be brave, be free, be you together with a whole lot of laughs too. Now, my guest today has a lot of title and titles and she rocks them all. She's an Emmy winning showrunner and executive producer, director, DJ, speaker, founder of Beauty News Buzz and philanthropist. She has appeared on every major network, digital platform and tech company, everything from NBC, HBO and BET to Disney, Netflix and iHeart. And she has worked with the biggest brands in the world too, from Apple, Nike, and and the NFL to Vogue, Rolls Royce, and the LVMH group. She all about the luxury, baby. She has interviewed some of the world's most iconic people, including the Obamas, Virgil Abloh, and Michael B. Jordan. She is also committed to helping others through her philanthropic work as a Columbia College National Alumni Board Member and Senior Director of the Emma Bowen Foundation, which helps future creators break into media and entertainment and supports multicultural professionals in the industry. The Chicago Tribune named her as one of the most influential Chicagoans, and her latest gig is official DJ of VH1's new Celebrity Squares, hosted by DC Young Fly. I am beyond honored and happy to welcome the one and only Naina Drake to the Fearless Authenticity Podcast. Hey, girl. What an intro. And, you know, great minds think alike. So here we are. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm V-neck twin because it's sweater weather. (laughs) Literally. what What better color to compliment us? Thank you so much for that amazing intro. I guess It's all true. So thank you. (laughs) You've been doing it, Naina. I am so happy and proud of you. You got so much going on. So let's start with the newest thing, uh, the new Celebrity Squares. Tell us about the show, uh, what the experience has been like recording it. Uh, I know you can't give away any outcomes and things like that, but talk about what you've been doing with that. Yeah, this show is amazing. Um, Big ups to the entire production team. Um, Niall Evans, Kevin Hart, Heartbeat Productions, and also Jesse Collins Entertainment. Uh, So amazing. And everybody behind the scenes was just a joy to work with, I must say. Uh, And DC Young Fly, this is his game show hosting debut. I'm so proud of him, so happy for him. And he's doing an amazing job. We are just having a ball, the fun that everybody sees us having on the show is really like what we're doing in real life. And I'm just really excited to be a part of it and honored. And there are some amazing, amazing celebrity guests we have on the show. We have Bobby Brown, Kirk Franklin, Tisha Campbell, and one of my faves, Babyface. <laughs> oh, girl, listen, y'all went across every aspect of black yeah. culture to get some to, to get everybody in these squares. And D, I, and there's a couple of clips I saw. And I don't know if those have aired yet. So I'm not gonna mess them up or anything like that. But he gives them kind of he gives them a hard time, too. And I yeah. love how y'all play together. It's an amazing, amazing experience. How did that come up for you? So my relationships, and that's one of the things that I, you know, tell people all the time who are coming into this business or who are trying to pivot within or pivot from outside in, um, you know, your relationships are really the most valuable thing that you have next to your work ethic and how you treat other people. And that really is a testament to all the brands that I've been able to work with, all the companies that I've been able to work with, all the, the amazing people that I've had an opportunity to work with. That's a testament to how hard I work, how great I actually, you know, work when I show up. And, you know, I think the joy of who I am when I come in the room, you know, like it's a good time. I bring the good vibes and, you know, that really builds great relationships. 
and it allows people to trust you. It allows them to understand that you are here to get the job done, but also have a great time. And it's fun, you know, working with me, I think for the most part. And they, you know, I get referred and, you know, people tell people, they tell a friend to tell a friend and they call me and and then I show up and do my thing. So <laughs> I think that part is so underrated when it comes to career advice. Like there's a lot of times when we focus on so many other things, which are important, as you said. But it's like nobody wants to be around people that they don't want to work with. And it, and and I think that the power of referrals, especially when you're an entrepreneur, are underrated because you can spend a whole lot of money on marketing and advertising. And and one well-placed referral will change your bottom line. Absolutely. That is so true. And but but you have to be genuinely happy to be where you are do a great job, be willing to admit when you don't know something and humble enough to ask for help when you need it and let others help you. You know, that's a, that's, that takes a lot of inner awareness. And, you know, for anyone that's listening, it's just, it's, it's practice. You never get to the peak of the mountain. There is no peak of the mountain. You're continuing to evolve, become a better person and learn how to show up a better version of who you did yesterday. Right? Like, I don't think about competition in the way that I think most people do. For me, I am competing against who I was yesterday, right? Like, I don't think about who else is in the room. I, I and I've said this in talks before, is like, I always keep abreast of what the industry is doing and what's happening on in the business of what I'm doing, but what others are doing in the business has none, nothing to do with me. Uh, I am trying to elevate past who I was yesterday, which is just being a better version of who I am. And you can't be, beat anybody else at being them anyway. Right. But, you know, it's like you always going to be. I remember um, uh, somebody told me this early in my career that, you know, people can imitate you all they want, but they can never be you. And they're always going to be a step behind you. Yeah because they can't know what you're doing next. And then she said, hell, I don't know what I'm doing next. So, you know, it's, it, you can't, you, they can't do it. So why not just go on and be yourself since that's what you an expert at. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about uh, some of the other projects you've got going on. Cause Lord knows uh, you are a hyphenate. You got I'm this, 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 and this. So let's, let's hit next beauty news buzz because this is, that's all yours. Right. Yes. You found it. You found a Beauty News Buzz. Tell us what it is and what was your motivation behind it? Beauty News Buzz is your place. It's a news media platform where you will hear about what's hot, new and next in beauty, skincare, hair and makeup. And I take a different approach than what's what most media and beauty news platforms take. And that is a priority of founders of color and companies of color that create products for women and men of color uh, in the beauty, skincare, hair, and makeup space. And so, you know, while we have a lot of other major publications out there, and they sometimes, you know, will mention a brand here or there, for the most part, like they're not giving a space fair and equal to what they do other founders. And while founders of color in the beauty space are now being more acknowledged in better ways and, you know, shelf space and retailers and other things like that. It's still uneven as far as the playing field goes. And it's an area of business that I love. Um, I love beauty, skincare, hair, makeup. It's something that I love and I could talk about all day, but it's also, um, there's a need there. And I come from uh, my media and news background is where I started in television. I started at Fox in Chicago. So I've been working in news my entire career in some aspect. And for me, it just made sense that if anyone was going to do it the way that it should be done, it would be me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, too, it's like it also hits on this piece that I think is a thread through all of your work, 
when you're talking about reaching out to people who are underrepresented, underserved, and that sort of thing. Because it's like, you know, when I started in the business, and I would imagine it was the same for you, like, you didn't see Black makeup artists, or you had to make sure you knew how to, and and hell, on some sets, you still got to do your own hair and makeup, because somebody's going to have you walk walking out here looking like a ghost, or, or, or a corpse, worse, you know? I've been on sets where makeup artists have done my makeup and literally I would have to go in the bathroom and wash it all off and then redo it. Um, and you know, that's, that's unfortunate. It, I will say that nowadays it's not as bad as it used to be, right? We have diversity and more representation when it comes to production sets and, and things like that on commercials, on TV shows, on films. But again, it's still underrepresented it underrepresented in a lot of ways. And, you know, I think that also has to speak to the brands that are in the beauty space, right? Like they have similar challenges with funding, with uh, marketing and publicity. They're not getting the same acknowledgement. And even if they were, right, there still is not a space or a, a platform that's doing it the way I'm doing it and the way I have plans to do it. And for me, it was it was that that was one of the most important things too. I like to stay informed of what's going on on the topics that I love, right? I love automotive. So that's my next space that I'm going into. Mm. Um, I've been working on cars since I was 15. And so uh, Girl, stop. <laughs> really? Ultimately, my my media company will have an uh, it'll be an umbrella of brands that focus on content that I love. And I'm just starting with beauty. Um, and then I'm moving into automotive next. But I want to like just share with the viewers that one of the most important thing things in this business, as far as like media goes, is to own your content. Right. And so I've been producing content for every brand under the sun my entire career. Right. And all some brands that have come and gone, some that are still existing and some that have, you know, kind of grown into others into bigger brands, but I've always created that content for other media companies. And when you create content as a producer, writer, or talent, a lot of times what you make, the money that you make from that is what you make because you showed up, right? You're not making any residuals off of that. You're not making long-term money and you know money that's, that can be made in the future for that content that you created today. So the goal for me was not just to you know, fulfill a need that was missing and tell stories in a way that I know how to do best, but also to own content, to have ownership over the brand and the content that I create so that the long game is for me to be able to monetize that in the future, right? Because everybody else I've been making content for for all these years, they're able to monetize off the things that I've done for them, but I can't. Exactly. And I think the, that lesson is so important for people entering the business. And that's one of your focuses, too. And I think it sounds like this is also playing into how you advise the other the people that you work with when you are doing work in service, because so much of your work is rooted in helping other people, especially uh, people who look like us, people of color, that and wanting them to succeed. What is so important to you about that knowledge and being of service to other people and helping them succeed and helping them understand these facts like the one you just told us that sometimes we don't realize until halfway into our career? Yeah, for me, my ultimate goal, and I think this is where it has to start with, with the younger generation or anyone, whether you're in this business at our age or you know younger older it doesn't matter what is what is the point of this like why are you doing what you're doing that's the bit that's the first question who you are what you love why you're doing what you're doing and what's the ultimate goal like that is absolutely the most important thing to understand because you could just get into the cycle of working for other other companies you know for the rest of your life and if that's a part of your life's purpose and you feel that is then so be it right but I know for me, my ultimate goal is to be a philanthropist for the arts, period, point blank. Like that is when I when I'm no longer here, <laughs> the goal that I have for my life is to have created and made the world a better place, right? Than it was when I got here, and leave resources, information, and beautiful content that is great, strong storytelling for those who come after me, right? My name is going to remain even when my physical body's not here anymore. And that's the goal for me. 
Um, and it, it's going to continue to nurture those who want to do what we do and what we've done, right? Like, what's the point of it if if what you've done goes with you? Right. And, and it, you know, and it's like dead silence after that. Like, oh, no, your name is not continuing to live on through the work that you've done. And so that's really important to me, the legacy of who I am, what I've done and why I'm doing it. And it shows up, like you said, in every single aspect of work that I do. And I don't just add those titles to my resume or my LinkedIn profile or anything like that because it sounds good. It's because it's a part of my life's purpose. It's a part of the actual successful work that I've done, not things that I want to do. These are things that I've done, right? And you know that's important when people create multi-hyphenate titles for themselves. Have you actually done the work? <laughs> right. That's a, it's a big question to ask. And sometimes I think because so many people who are aspiring and there's nothing wrong with aspiring, uh, but I think that's the reason why so many, some, when you do all these different things, you get these questions. Cause I know I do, but you know, it, it is about, it is about how you you move through all these different things and the thread you see for yourself before anything else. Now, the question I have for you about that, though, because this is the thing I love about what you just said, is the intentionality behind it and the work behind it. And by work, I mean not just the work you do every day, but the work you're doing on yourself. And you even mentioned this earlier about that inner work and awareness. How did you get to the point? where you chose to intentionally do these things where you became aware of what you wanted your legacy to be because a lot of people don't consider what their legacy is until they're well past middle age yeah for me i've i've always i was i say this i've always been ahead of the game i feel like this is this is not my first time being here i'm a very spiritual person um i can't say i'm very religious but I am very spiritual and this is not my first time here. I am here to accomplish a goal and a mission that I feel like I was born with. Um, it wasn't like, you know, a, a, something happened and now I'm like, oh, this is what I want to do. No, this was an evolution. I knew at a very young age, I started DJing when I was 12. What? I started working in television when I was 15. So, and I moved out and lived and was living on my own at the age of 15. So for me, I've been in a space of like forward movement for at a very young age. And not until I you know, got to this place that I realized how ahead of myself I was. I thought that was just what I was supposed to be doing. It didn't seem abnormal to me. It seemed like, OK, you know, you're you're going at a great pace <laughs> when I didn't realize I was like moving at the pace of a mid 20 to 30 year old at the age of 15 to 12. So the clarity that I have, I will say that I feel like I was born with it. And I do feel like there are certain things that some of us are just born with. We're just born with the instinct of, um, you know, growth and wanting to progress and be great in this world and give back. Whereas some people, they sometimes have to evolve into that. And everyone's pace is different. That's something that I also share with others is that the pace at which I move in my life and how I encourage others to move is at my speed. The world does not dictate my speed. Other people don't dictate my speed. Other things don't dictate my speed. If if everybody else wants to go 100 and I am going 45, I'm going to keep going 45 because why? There are multiple lanes that you can pick to go around me. Amen. <laughs> <How about> that? <laughs> This, there, there is so much in what you just said, because I think a lot of times our experiences in life, and this is this is actually something that I've explored with fearless authenticity, both personally with my clients and whatever, because I believe our biggest successes come when we stay true to who we are and the purpose that we were put here for. But a lot of times we get pulled out of that when we either compare ourselves to other people or when we allow what other people want for us or see in us, pull us out of our purpose because we end up having these moments where somebody says, oh, you know what you should do? Yes. And sometimes it's right, but it's like we're almost fulfilling other people's expectations or saying, you know, that word should, you know, can get us every time. Have there ever been any moments when there have been moments of doubt 
either whether they came from internally or externally that took you even temporarily off that path that you are so sure about now? Absolutely. I mean, you 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 have to keep moving through the uncomfortableness, right? It's not it's not going to always seem super clear to you and that's where your faith comes in, right? That's where my faith has come in and that's where not just my faith in a higher power on a spiritual level, but just my faith in myself, my confidence in myself, the when I look back at the things that I've already accomplished and how proud I am of myself, you know, I am really my biggest cheerleader. <laughs> like, I hype myself up every single day, but I give that to others too, but I give it to myself first, right? And that's just super duper important. And I, I encourage other people to do that because when you have the moments where you are questioning why you're doing what you're doing or how to move forward to the next step and, you know, how do I pivot? How do I do this? There's two really important things. It's important that you look to yourself and your higher power, whatever that may be. You reground yourself first, because if you get your direction from someone else, you're always going to look for that moving forward. Right. So you should be if you don't have a spiritual base, you should be your first source. And if you have a spiritual base, that's first. And then you come second. You should be the nucleus to the decision making. Right. Second. Be very careful who you take advice from <laughs> because everyone has an opinion. It's, it's so interesting. There's just so many opinions. Everyone has, everyone has something to say. Everyone has advice on what you should be doing and how you should be doing it and why you shouldn't do this and you know where you should live and who you should be with. Everyone has an opinion. Guess what? That's not special. What's special is who you're getting your advice from. And I have learned that I only want to take advice from those who have done or are doing what I'm trying to do because those who haven't are pretty much guessing and they will lead you down a road to nowhere. They might love you. They might be your family. <laughs> they might be your friends. And they you might be well-intentioned. Oh, absolutely. Because, because they want, they want you to be happy. But what they don't understand, though, is that sometimes those suggestions that they give you are really going to hold you back and they're going to keep you in a bubble of lack of calculated risk. I'm not a crazy risk taker. I'm a calculated risk taker in the things that I've done. And it's it's fended me well. Right. So so I just say be your be your number one cheerleader, cheerleader in everything that you are trying to pivot through. Don't always depend on other people's opinions, because when you do that, you will always need their opinions. And two, make sure that you are getting your advice from people who have done what you are trying to do or have, you know, or want to do, because okay. everyone else will like send you down a black hole or they're just, you know, they don't know. And it doesn't mean that that what they're saying does not matter. It means that. You should just be very selective in how you filter those suggestions. Indeed, ma'am. So wise. And I love how you broke it down into the two pieces, because I think a lot of times we get confused about where we end and where other people begin, especially for the people we love, whether they're family, uh, you know, relationships, friendships, or what have you. It's sometimes hard to find those boundaries and to listen but then still take it in and, and do what we're going to do with it. Um, one of the things that I want to touch on that you talked about, and I think this is part of it, when you talk about focusing on self and your higher power, whoever that may be and however you define that. One of the things I, I focus on a lot um, that I think allows us to find that, that space for ourselves is self-care. So with all the different work that you juggle, the travel and, and all these different things, uh, which require a lot of giving, how do you take care of yourself and feed yourself for your gifts? Like what are some things that you do and is that a priority for you? I am very intentional with my peace. I think that for me is so important. Like I am not one that will, I've, I've learned how to say no, I would say in all the ways that I need to. 
like that's that's the first thing because when you are not comfortable with saying no to things you'll sacrifice your peace in order to appease someone else so being comfortable and okay and not feeling bad about saying no saying guess what you know it's not that you don't want to do something right it's just because you physically or emotionally mentally whatever that is you're not able to and at the end of the day that is where I think it starts for me, getting comfortable with saying no. And I learned that early on in my career. Um, I know how to say no without people knowing that I said no. <laughs> give, me, give me an example of that, ma'am. Well, part of, I, I would say one way that I do it is letting them know that I really did have the genuine intention on wanting to do it. But unfortunately, I've either obligated my time to someone else or to something that's that I have to do for myself. And anyone that doesn't respect that shouldn't have got a yes in the first place, yeah. right? Yeah. So that part. So <laughs> that so part. You being graceful with yourself, and then the people that are asking for some of you in an energetic way, in a monetary way, in a physical way, if they can't give you grace, then why should they be given a yes from you anyway, right? Like I think that. That's super important. So that's where it starts with me. So once once I was able to prioritize and learn how to say no without feeling bad or apologizing or explaining myself, any of that, I was able to focus on all the things that I needed, whether it was mental, physical, emotional, financial, spiritual. I'm able to focus on all the things that I need because now all the yeses that I've given to others are not in the way. Right. I have a I have an open road for myself to do what I want to do. And that's, I think, where a lot of people, they they struggle with self-care because they're giving their self to others. <laughs> you don't even have space to take care of yourself because you're taking care of too many people. And I've been taking care of people my entire life. I don't have any kids, but I have actually been taking care of other people my entire life. Wow. And that explains why you're so intentional about it. Because I think until, I don't think I learned that lesson fully until I was my father's caregiver, um, you know? And, and that was a journey that taught me a lot about and helped me see how I was leaking energy. Because when you have a lot of energy, you leak it all over the place because people see it, grab for it, and you actually think you owe it to them. And you, if you have a generous spirit, it's hard to pull back and, and make those boundaries. And it's really easy for that to get murky. And I am in awe and impressed and inspired by the intentionality with which you do that because that's not easy to get. And I would imagine that the road there has not necessarily been um, as, as, as smooth as we might imagine. No, no, it hasn't been. I think and I think overall, my life hasn't been a smooth life. It's definitely not. If I had to, I'm Rocky Road, okay? I don't show it because that's just the grace that I that I give to myself. It's not, and I, and I hate to say it this way, but it's just the truth. People don't care. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care. <laughs> There's no other way. To... <laughs> people don't care what you've been through in a lot of ways, right? Some people do have like a soft spot for you. But the masses of people don't care about that struggle. So explaining it to everyone is often a lot, a lot of waste of wasted energy and a waste of time. And my life has been a roller coaster. But I believe this: life is a roller coaster for a lot of us. But as long as you don't fall off, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Don't fall off, right? You can just stay on the ride. You might throw up a couple of times. You might pass out. You might wake back up. <laughs> you might feel very dizzy by the end of this ride, but you didn't you didn't fall off. You didn't die, you know? And that is that is how life is. And I actually wish I was told that at a younger age. I wish I was told that it's not going to be smooth because what I what I thought was going to happen based off of what I was being told when I was younger was that the harder you work, the easier it's going to get. 
That was a lie. That's <laughs> not true, guys. That's the biggest lie. It is the biggest lie. That's that's one of the biggest lies. That the second biggest lie is there's only one person in this world that you can be happy with. So you gotta find this one person in the billions of people in this world. That was the second lie. I was like, guys, what who said who, who came up with this? So that first lie of the harder you work, the you know, you get this whole retirement at the end and then you can relax or the harder you work, the more successful you'll be. That's actually not true. And I think it's very unfair to tell people that because it really doesn't dictate or give a fair reflection of how life is going to kind of move you through all the obstacles you have to get through. And, and it doesn't, it doesn't get easier. You get stronger. That's what happens. It doesn't get easier. There's just different challenges that come with it. No matter how many people you know, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how much money you have or how successful you have, you are always going to have challenges. It's just a different type of challenge, right? And that's that's really, to me, I think how people should look at it. And it's not this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that we were told when we were kids. That is absolutely not true. And it's unfortunate that um, that we were lied to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I feel the way. <laughs> okay. And, and here's the thing that's funny. It's like, I tell people, people now ask me, because I'm, I'm getting to that age now where people, especially when I let my hair, all my hair, gray hair come in, they're like, so when you go retire, it's so never, I love to work. I love my work. I may change how I work. Yes. I definitely will change how, because I've already changed how I work. I will never work as hard as I did when I was in my twenties and thirties. Yes. Never, not yes. ever, never. And, you know, even though there are moments when I do work hard, you know, I just make sure that, you know, I'm not I'm not pinning my hopes on uh, doing what I want to do when I'm, quote unquote, done with work, because tomorrow is not promised. Yes. And so I'm going to do what I want today. Um, I want to talk to you about um, challenges because you brought those up in the Rocky Roads and stuff. I think as all entrepreneurs and, P and, and people in entertainment, uh, there are things, there are failures, there are setbacks that actually propel us forward. Um, and what have been, what could, if you had to pick a challenge as like the biggest one, what did you, what was it and what did you learn from it? And, and did have all these different challenges on this roller coaster you've been on, has it helped you to get like a better system of bouncing back when you're disappointed, discouraged, or feel like you failed at something? I'll start with, there's been an endless amount of challenges, period. Like the list is, <laughs> we don't have time for the list, but. <laughs> Highlight, biggest one. But I will say my biggest challenge that I still work through today is the balance of my career and personal life, right? Yeah. I've, I've, I've thought about that whole lie that we were told and realized that it's not about, oh, I'll enjoy this later. I'll, en I'll do this later. No, enjoy this now. Make time for it now. It's there, there is time and you need to make time for this, whether it's a friend's birthday party, um, going for a walk, whatever that is. And so that my biggest challenge, I think in my career, my life, has been the balance of the two and feeling like I was not sacrificing my personal life for my career and my career for my personal yeah. life. Like they, they were going back, you know, fighting for each other for space and priority in my life. And I, through that, I learned through the life challenges, the career challenges, my resilience is unreal, unreal. My bounce back is crazy. I'm stunned at my bounce back, to be honest with you, but that's because I've been through so much. There's no way that I would have the resilience, the clarity, the focus, the get back up that I have today if I hadn't been through all that stuff. And I'm not saying that um, that I wanted to go through it or I want to go through it again, or if I had to do it again, I would do it again. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no. <laughs> What I'm saying is, is I have learned, unfortunately, the hard way. Life has been very challenging for me. And while I don't show it, I don't talk about it a lot. Just know that 
my joy is well earned. <laughs> my blessings I deserve. I'm worthy. I am beyond worthy of everything that people see me show. And I don't even show everything, but what I do share and show is is well well deserved. Well deserved. I have lived through the storm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that that to me still today is um and I catch myself. The only difference from, you know, how I dealt with that balance prior to today is the fact that I I can see it and feel it a lot quicker. Like my my sensitivity to the the out of balance is fast now. I'm like, oh nope. And then I, my decision making on where the priority goes is a lot quicker and clearer. That's the difference. Oh, I love that because what it's, it sounds like what you're saying is that all of the challenges before and the key to your bounce back is actually your detection system, the development of this detection system, yeah. which which actually d helps you avoid some of that, the, the challenges now, at least maybe a little bit. A little bit, but it, but more so, it just keeps things in balance more, ah, right? Well, you can I, deal with, yeah. Where well, I'm not just like working like crazy. Like when I would go on a production, a TV show, right, and I would pick up a new show, my friends would know automatically. They'd be like, "Oh, we'll we'll talk to her in like five months. <laughs> we'll see her in five months." Like literally, like I would disappear from my personal life, my friends and family and everything because I was so engulfed in that. And I allowed that to consume me so much that I didn't make space or time for anything else. And that's not a healthy way to be. A healthy, a healthy diet is a variety, a balanced meal. A healthy life is variety, <laughs> a balanced social life, a variety of, you know, having career opportunities and social opportunities, traveling, having peace, having quiet, having joy, having laughter. You need all the things, all the emotions to feel like you're actually living in fullness. Otherwise, you're just living in a tunnel. <laughs> it feels like a tunnel when it could be you know, a celebration. It could be a festival, right? Like I would always take a festival over a tunnel, right? Indeed, indeed. It's like my grandmother used to say, um, when you're always trying to get through something, you're never there. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm, well, when I get done with this, there's always gonna be something else to say that about, right? Mm -hmm. um, what for you, um, is the best piece of advice you ever got. So we've talked about the lies that people have told. And there's even a built-in lie, I think, in one of those things, the, the lie that we got told, especially in our generation, of you can have it all, right? Um, but what's the best advice you've ever gotten? And I'm sure that you give out a lot of advice in the mentorship and the, and the philanthrop philanthropic work that you do. What's the best advice you've gotten? There's so many, but one that I always reference to is what one of the things my mom shared with me. And my mom was a very open-minded person, but she was a very um, studious person um, is how I would describe her. And she shared with me to learn everything that you can so that if you ever have to hire someone to do what you need to do, you know whether they're doing it correctly. You pay for what you don't know, so learn as much as you can, is how she phrased it. Woo. It's so true. You pay for what you don't know, so learn as much as you can. If you need to get your hair cut, you're going to have to pay someone to do that, unless you learn how to do it yourself. And it, even, if, even if you choose to do it yourself, you know whether you're doing it right or wrong. And if you choose to pay someone to do it, you know if they're doing it right or wrong. So educating and informing yourself about all the things that you need in your life, not everything in the world because you can't be everything for everyone in the world. What you need in your life, do you need to get your nails done? Do you need to you know, know how to you know, exercise, like all these things. It's not saying you need to become the expert in it, but have awareness and clarity and educate yourself about everything that you need in your life because you pay for what you don't know. So learn as much as you can. 
And that that was um, probably one of the best pieces of advice. Of course, I've got so many, but that was one that that still sticks with me to this day. And it really does resonate. And it reminds me when I do have to hire someone or when I need something new, I need to check it out first before I just pick anybody. You know, I'm very picky about that type of stuff now. Same girl, same. All right, I'm, I'm moving into the last few questions that I ask everyone. What is your proudest accomplishment so far in life, career, however you want to define it? And what do you still dream of doing? So it's a two-parter. Okay. So my proudest accomplishment is becoming the person that I am today. I am the best version of who I've ever been today. And I'm just getting better. I love That's what it. I'm proud of. It's not all the awards, which I think most people would go to, they would go to all the awards that, you know, that I've won or um, the people that I've worked with or that I've met or no, that's not a proud accomplishment to me. The culmination of who I've become and who I am and who I am continuing to evolve into is my proudest accomplishment and creating a legacy of who I will still remain to be, even when I'm no longer here, is what I'm, I'm congratulating myself in advance for. I love it. What do you still dream of doing? I still dream of, you know, like being, having, having a family, I think, because I have sacrificed a lot of time to not, you know, focus on it. I have given time to it. But when it didn't work out, I was like, well, I guess I'm going to go back to this money because I, I know how to do that very well. <laughs> Getting to the bag is not a problem for me. Um, but I, I, I would you know, like to have a partner because I will say this. Life is more fun with great people, whether they're your friends or family or partners or whatever. Life is more fun, even with your pets, right? <laughs> with more, you know, with the right people, not just quality over quantity. Let's be clear. We are not just, I don't, I'm not a people collector because there are some of those out there too. But um, I am very intentional about the type of people I have around me, the energy that I give and what I expect in exchange. And um, I think that's something that, that I look forward to. I know it's, it's going to be a part of my life in this lifetime. Um, so I'm excited about that, actually. I'm very excited about that. And, you know, only time will tell. But, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. All I can do is just show up, show up every day and be, you know, who I hope to be better than I was yesterday. So, I yeah, so that. that that's something I look forward to. And, you know, just continuing to create my legacy and um, create something that will live on beyond who I am. I cannot wait to see what that legacy is. My final question is what I ask everybody, and it's how I like to end the Fearless Authenticity podcast. When, Naina, do you feel like you are at your best, truest, most authentic expression of yourself? I feel that way when I am grounded, balanced, full, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, in the sun and by the water, and maybe with some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the pod today. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a joy. Like literally, if I could sum our vibe up in one word, every time I'm with you, whether it's been a year, a month, two years, 10 years. It is pure joy. And I appreciate you so much. And thank you. Back to you, girl. Like literally right back to you. It is so amazing to see somebody you know 
and admire, elevate higher and higher, doing exactly what they want to do. Naina was also preaching to the choir on this one. So here are some of my takeaways from this conversation. The affirmation that relationships and how you treat others are as important to your success as your work ethic, because it's how we connect with each other. As much as I talk about individual authenticity, I love when people talk about the community aspect of that. I also love how competition is really only with ourselves. Balancing that with knowing what's happening around you, but not letting it dictate how you move, choosing what's right for yourself, and knowing that what others do has absolutely nothing to do with what we do ourselves. Uh, and also going along with that philosophy is that there is no peak of the mountain there, you know, and all the lies we've been told, the things we believe about success, especially that it gets easier as we work harder uh, and that you can only be happy with just one person in the world. Knowing those things are actually fallacies that we believe because that's what we've been told or what we've assumed to be true, that really eases up the pressure on ourselves on a whole lot of different levels. And I love, 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 love the idea of choosing our own rate of progress toward our own individual greatness, that the world does not dictate my speed. Man, Naina, thank you so much for giving us that blueprint for success and the fact that it has so much flexibility in it and space for individual interpretation and expression of it. Uh, appreciate you. Best of luck on all of your endeavors and uh, can't wait to see you on TV again soon. I also really appreciate you, my Fearless Authenticity listeners, for your attention, for your support. I would not do this without you. And y'all know I couldn't do it without my amazing production team. Thank you to Vicki, Jess, Lisa E., Wayne for your hard work every single week. Please rate, review, download, share, subscribe, do something with this episode everywhere you get your podcast, including on YouTube. It really does help us to expand the reach and really make an impact. I'd also be honored if you joined my community by signing up for my newsletter at fearlessauthenticity.com. You can also follow me on social media. I'm always happy to hear from you, your thoughts, your suggestions, and everything at Ms. Jean Sparrow on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok is where you'll find me. And at J.M. Sparrow on Instagram and Twitter. I'm also rolling out some exclusive content in the spring, both from the pod and behind the scenes. So stay tuned for more details on that. This has been Fearless Authenticity with Gene Sparrow. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again soon. 